we can parse the uh, input assembly files, we can compute the uh, layout of the instructions, basically computing where they are in the final binary. Uh, we can encode the instructions, which is figuring out what the exact bit pattern is that the CPU needs to execute them. And we have a method to print it back out as an assembly listing with additional information, with the um, addresses of the individual instructions, plus the actual encoding uh, of the individual instructions, uh, which is pretty useful and quite neat. And so I think all that's left to do now is basically take all of these encoding uh, bits here and concatenate them into one big blob of bytes that we can uh, write to disk into a file and then this can go and be written into a uh, program memory. So let's do that. I think we just want a simple function that uh, takes the program and then uh, does this for us. So pretty straightforward, um, just a function that just takes a program and returns its uh, bytes. And then for the time being, let's just print whatever the function returns. And now we actually need to go write that function. So what do we do here? I think we uh, want a buffer of bytes that we're going to slowly fill up and eventually return. So if we run this, nothing should happen. And indeed, uh, we get an empty uh, byte buffer uh, as an output. And so let's actually um, fill the buffer up. Let's go through every instruction in the program. And first of all, let's skip all the instructions for which we lack an encoding or where we don't have an address. And now we need to handle the case where the next instruction we want to put into the buffer is actually um, further down the program. So for example, in here, um, after we have encoded the um, halt instruction and we stored it in the binary in this buffer here, the next instruction we're going to see is this load immediate here, which is all the way at F040. And so we need to fill in the space between these instructions with um, zero such that the um, load immediate here is actually at the right offset in this um, final binary form of the program. So in case there's a jump in the uh, instruction stream, we're going to uh, insert uh, zero bytes. And the number of bytes we're going to insert is just the difference between uh, where the next instruction wants to be in the uh, binary and what we currently have as a uh, buffer size. And finally, we want to add the actual bytes of the instruction to the buffer. Uh, we start out with the um, lower byte and then with the um, higher byte. All right, and I think that should uh, be all that's needed. Uh, let's see if this works and let's see if this produces some binary blob. And it sure does. And there's probably a lot of zeros in here because we're making a pretty big jump down here um, to F040. Let me quickly change this to just hex 40. And let's see uh, where this takes us. Pretty cool. So this makes the binary a lot smaller and indeed, uh, you can see the um, binary representation of um, this uh, program. We basically just collected the bytes here that we've encoded and put them together into a big buffer. Now printing the binary in this form is quite uh, anticlimactic and it doesn't really help us understand what happened. So I think what we want to have here is a helper function that produces a hex dump of the binary that is easy to read uh, and we can reason about. So let's go uh, write this function. So this is going to be fairly straightforward. Um, let's uh, start by dividing the binary up into uh, a chunk of maybe eight uh, bytes per line. Let's actually create a bytes per line parameter that we set to eight by default. All right, so this uh, goes through the uh, offsets in the binary, uh, incrementing by bytes per line uh, in between. And now let's uh, get the actual chunk um, at this location. So the chunk is basically the slice of the binary at the current offset all the way up to the offset plus the bytes per line that we're printing. So let's uh, convert this into a string representation. And then let's uh, just print this. And let's make sure that uh, all the lines have the uh, same uh, length. Okay, let's see uh, what this does. Cool, okay, this produces a binary dump. And let's see what happens if we insert uh, a few more um, zero rows here. It actually generates more zeros here in the middle. Okay, that seems to be working. So we're basically getting the binary uh, dumped out as a hex dump with uh, eight bytes per line. This isn't all too useful yet. I think we want a address um, shown on the left that basically tells us where exactly we are in the binary. All 
Okay, that seems to be working. It's uh, printing the offset, um, but this causes everything to uh, kind of misalign a bit. So let's actually compute the longest um, address that we're ever gonna see and let's align everything along that. All right, there we go. We are adding uh, zeros in front to make sure all of the addresses have the exact same length. And now if we create a uh, larger chump here, you can see that we have more digits here and more zero padding here at the beginning. All right, so that's already uh, pretty neat. Um, let's maybe do the regular hex dump thing and let's also have a uh, ASCII representation at the end of the line. So basically um, what we're doing is we're going through uh, every byte uh, in this chunk and if the byte is in the printable ASCII range, so something that actually has a proper character assigned to it, we're going to um, print that character. And otherwise we're just going to print a period, uh, which is what most hex uh, dumpers actually uh, also do. And so uh, what we can do here is after we've printed the um, actual bytes, we can add some space and uh, print these characters. Pretty neat. So that looks uh, a lot like a hex dump now, which is uh, exactly what we were going for. Another feature I'd like to have in here is uh, basically us detecting if there are long runs of all zeros and just replacing them with like one line that just says, okay, I'm seeing a lot of zeros here. So uh, let's do that. So if all of the uh, bytes in the current chunk are zero, I think we just want to print the message and then actually continue and not print anything. Okay, and that is already partially working. It just replaced all the zero lines with a, a zeros string, but it didn't remove any of the output lines. So uh, let's do that. I think we want to keep track of whether we're currently in a zeros block. We're not at the beginning. And then if we're not in a zeros block and we uh, just um, saw the first uh, block of all zeros, we want to print this message. And then we want to set the uh, zeros variable to true, which is uh, just going to make all subsequent zero lines uh, not print anything. And then uh, once we reach a line that is actually non-zero for change, we're gonna clear that uh, flag again to um, false. Cool, that is actually working. So we're now only printing the zeros for the first um, zero line and all the consecutive uh, zero segments in the binary, uh, we just ignore and we just skip over. I think we want the zeros to be aligned properly here with the uh, bytes. So let me add some uh, white space there. Let's maybe add uh, periods. Cool, yeah, that looks pretty good. So at a glance, we can see that this is a binary segment uh, at address zero all the way up to 10 plus some extra. And then there's a whole bunch of zeros all the way to 20. And then there's a whole bunch of zeros in here again. And then at 80, the thing resumes. And then when we go into our program and we actually change this back to the um, original um, F040 and we run this again, you can see that we're basically just stripping out all the zeros and we uh, see the interesting pieces of the binary show up here. And finally, uh, once we're done printing the entire binary, I think it would be cool to just um, have, like we did with the zeros, have a end of binary marker that also shows the final address uh, just beyond the binary, which is going to be basically saying what is the length of the binary we've created. Cool, yeah, that works, that is perfect. So this is our last instruction here at F060. It's uh, two bytes long. And then the official end of the binary is at address F062. That is very cool. One thing uh, we need to consider is the fact that Minipro, the program I'm using to flash a, a binary file to the program memory, it actually expects the file you're flashing to match the um, program memory exactly in size. So the program memory um, that I'm using right now is 128 kilobytes in size. And you have to give Minipro a file that is exactly 128 kilobytes in size, otherwise it will complain. So I think what we want to have for our assembler is a command line option that lets us set um, the exact size of the um, binary file that we want to have. So something like uh, a dash S for size and then 65536, which is uh, 64 kilobytes. And right now this doesn't work because we don't have that um, option yet, but we can add it pretty easily. 
So we'll support it as a dash s for size or also a longer dash dash size version. It's going to be an integer. And that works again. So now we just need to honor this flag and do something with it. And I think the place to do something with it is this convert program to bytes function here. And I think we just want to pass in the size there. So in here we want to have an optional output size uh, parameter that we can specify. And once we're done uh, building up the buffer of instructions, I think we just want to add zeros at the end of the buffer until it's uh, this size. First of all, let's check that uh, the binary we have produced is actually not already larger than the output size, which would be an error. All right. And then afterwards, we're just going to fill in uh, zeros. All right, I think that should already do the trick. And yeah, indeed, that worked. So um, beforehand, the binary stopped at F062. Uh, which was basically after the uh, final instruction. But now there's a whole bunch of more zeros here, uh, all the way to uh, 10000, which is um, the end of this uh, 64 kilobyte region. And then my memory that I have is actually not 64 kilobyte, it's this uh, 128 kilobyte uh, memory. And now with this option, the uh, end of the binary is actually further down the road even. It's at uh, 20000. And when we leave the flag away, the binary will just end where it ends. We can also ask it to end too early, in which case we get an error. Uh, this is the uh, actual binary size we have, and uh, we requested 200. So that seems to be working. This is pretty useful. All right, this is almost feature complete now. So we're um, parsing the input files. We are computing addresses. We are actually encoding the individual instructions into their bit form. Um, we're printing the assembly, uh, converting the program to bytes. Uh, we even show some hex dump of the output. And I think we also want the option to write the binary to a file. So let's add an option for that. So this is actually pretty simple. Uh, once we have the binary representation, we can just uh, dump that to disk. So if the user sets the um, output command line flag, what we're doing is we're opening that output file for writing uh, as a binary file, and then we're just dumping all the bytes in there. Let's see if this works. So this is our program, and let's uh, write it to disk, test.binary, and let's see if that worked. And there we go. There's our binary, 61 kilobytes. And if I specify an exact size, and then we check again, it's actually exactly the 64 kilobytes that we need. That is pretty cool. And so a few other things we can do here. Um, maybe uh, we don't always want to see this uh, hex dump here. Maybe we only want to see it uh, if the user uh, didn't provide a output file. And so if I run this again now, we only see uh, the assembly output, but uh, no uh, binary dump here. Uh, maybe we want to make the assembly output here optional as well, because you know maybe we don't want to see it all the time. So let's add a command line option for that. And so this is going to be false by default, but now we can uh, check here before we actually do the printing to see if the user requested it. And so by default, nothing is printed, but the file is written. If I add a dash V here, we see the assembly output. And if I skip the output file, we see the binary dump. And now maybe if we do write the file, the user might want still to see the hex dump. So let's add another command line flag to do that. All right, let's see if this works. So uh, without any command line flag, we don't see any output. But if we pass the dash X for print the hex dump, we actually get the hex dump. And we can also pass the V option to get both the hex dump and the uh, assembly listing with the fully assembled uh, instruction encodings. 
So this looks uh, pretty good. I think uh, what we have here is more or less the program that we had running uh, in the last episode uh, with a lot of comments, etc. And the assembler can run through this, assemble it, lay it out, and then write it to disk as a uh, binary file. And so in fact, let's do this. This is our binary file here. And let's see if we can uh, look what's uh, inside. All right, so this is the binary file um, that we have produced. Let me actually remove the uh, knob here in the beginning. As you can see, there's a zero zero here at the beginning of the program. And let's remove that. Let's reassemble it. Dump it again to hex. And now that looks a lot better. And now let's uh, actually split this view here. And uh, let me pull up the um, old binary that we had. So this is the binary that we had um, programmed into the program memory the last time. And it contains a whole bunch of garbage um, because there was random uh, stuff in the, in the memory. And we always just manually modified individual bytes in the, in the program. But let's look at the uh, interesting parts of the, of the program and let's see if they match. Let me pull up the um, hex dump here on the uh, side. Just skip the output file. That gives us a hex dump. And so as we can see, the assembler generates um, these bytes here uh, uh, right at the beginning of the program. And these actually do match up nicely with what we manually wrote uh, into this file. And then here, this is the hex dump of the binary file that the assembler created and it matches exactly. And the second line is exactly the same story. Um, that's our output and it matches perfectly uh, with what's in the uh, ROM. Then if we jump forward here at the address uh, hex 20, there is a blob of um, instructions here. And as we can see, hex 20, it's the same blob of instructions. Um, the only difference here being that we didn't have a halt instruction here, where here we do have a halt now, this uh, 009, which is this instruction here. And then there's this big gap and all the way down at F040, F040, and the same here. There's the next block of instructions and it's basically just this blob of bytes. And as you can see, that's exactly uh, what is there. And that's exactly uh, what the uh, assembler also produced. So this assembler seems to be doing what it is supposed to be doing. It's now really easy to go in and change uh, the program. Instead of manually encoding all the instructions, we can just go in here and say, ah, I don't feel like this number. I want to have a totally different number there. And then we just go in and reassemble the whole thing. And as you can see, there's this BA now showing up and this 12 now, which corresponds to these two numbers. And so this is going to really streamline writing programs for the CPU, because all we have to do is write it up in this uh, fairly convenient assembly uh, description. And we have uh, this assembler script over here that basically goes through the whole thing and assembles it and produces a binary output that we can uh, write to the program memory. All right, this is super exciting. I can't wait to see what we can do with this assembler and what all the new instructions are going to be that we're going to add to the CPU in the future and then hopefully also to the assembler so we can immediately take advantage of them and try them out. That's going to be super cool. And I think in the near future, we want to start tackling some of the um, ALU operations such that the um, processor can actually do computations like addition, subtraction, and some logical operations. And having an assembler is going to be very useful for that because we can write up uh, small programs that actually do some computation and we don't have to uh, fiddle around with the instruction encoding manually. So I can't wait to tackle that finally. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and subscribe if you want to see more of this and uh, see you next time.